Number one says Jade is riding a Ferris wheel. Her height in feet is modeled by the following function where M is the number of minutes since she got on the ride. So how many minutes does it take the Ferris wheel to move one full revolution? So you've looked at um, a bunch of this with the variable. So here's the variable. So you've got two pi times m divided by 10 and you've seen kind of a pattern how then this if it's 2 pi which is one revolution so it's one revolution in 10 minutes this bottom number so we know it's 10 minutes here that's one way you've maybe looked at how to find it um, you can also look at calculating the period and calculating the period is taking the normal sine period, which is 2 pi, divided by this B value. So then dividing it by 2 pi divided by 10. And if we divide, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to write this as multiplying by the flip of 10 divided by 2 pi. So then those two pies will cancel and you end up with the period is 10 that way as well. So 10 minutes to get through one revolution and then what is the radius of this ferris wheel is going to be the same as the amplitude how high and low it goes from the center so that's going to be 100 feet um, and then it asks us to sketch a graph of this um, so for this one i personally like to take the um, equation and make sure that the middle part is written so that I know what the phase shift is. So in this case, it's written like this with the B value multiplied in. So I like to take this middle part here and factor out this B value. So I like to factor this out. So I'm going to put this out front and factor so negative 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 10 is going to give us negative 5 over 2 and you could do that if you want me to do that off to the side so that's negative pi factoring out so dividing by 2 pi over 10 which is multiplying by the reciprocal so multiplying by 10 divided by 2 pi so those pi's will cancel and we get negative 10 over 2 times 2, and that simplifies to negative 5 halves. And then we have plus m. So this is that middle chunk there, and the reason I like to do that is then I can see um, what my phase shift was. So the phase shift is going to be moving to the right um, 2.5 units. And so what that means is this original axis right here, this original starting axis is actually going to move to 2.5. And so everything's going to shift over a little bit here. And then we've got um, the midline for this function. And the midline is that 110 starting value. So that's about here. Then we have an amplitude of 100. So we're going to go up um, 100 from 110. So that's going to be at 210. So our max is going to be about here. And then down 100. So down at about 10 is going to be our minimum. And so then our period is 10 units, right? So 10, I like to take and divide it into fourths. So 10 divided by 4 is every 2.5 units, we're going to be at a min, a middle, or a max. Um, and so you can kind of section that off here if you want to. Remember, this is at 2.5. So 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5, plus 2.5 is 7.5, plus 2.5 is 10, and then 12.5, and then um, 15, 17.5, and then um, 20. So this will help us figure out our mins, our middles, and our maxes. And the sine function starts at um, starts at a middle, and then it goes up to a max, and then it goes back to a middle, and then down to a min, and then repeats itself back at the middle, then a max at the next quarter of a period, back to the middle, 
and then down to the max, or down to the min, sorry. And then this would be back to a minimum. So then you'd have kind of this sketch of your sine function here or of this Ferris wheel. So at um, zero, it's down here at a minimum, down at the ground level, right, getting on the Ferris wheel. Okay, then after two and a half seconds, you're at the midline of the Ferris wheel. Then you're up at the top of the Ferris wheel after five seconds, and then you are on your descent back down to the ground, and then it repeats itself. Number two says the vertical position in feet of a point on a windmill is represented by this function here, where t is the number of seconds after the windmill started turning at constant speed. Select all true statements. So the windmill blades are five feet long. We can see that here with the amplitude. So the amplitude represents um, those lengths. Then it said the blades make five revolutions per second, and that has to do with the period. So again, if we look at this B value here, this one says two pi over three. So that means one revolution in three um, seconds. So it takes three seconds to do one revolution. So then this is wrong. So one revolution in three seconds. The midline of the graph is 20. And we see that midline here, the number added or subtracted outside. So that's true. The windmill makes one revolution every three seconds. That's what we just said here. So this is true. Um, and then... Finally, the windmill makes three revolutions per second. That's false because it makes one per three seconds. So then E would be false. All right, number three says a seat on a Ferris wheel um, travels 250 pi feet in one full revolution. So how many um, feet is the carriage from the center of the Ferris wheel? So if we take a look, I like to draw a picture for this. So if we're looking at this as here's our Ferris wheel or our Ferris wheel. Okay, how far is the carriage from the center? So we know that in one revolution, so in one um, rotation around, it travels 250 pi. And we know that the arc length is equal to the radius times your radian measure. And we know the radian measure here for one revolution is 2 pi. So we know that the angle that this traveled is 2 pi. So, and we know that the arc length is 250. So we know 250 pi equals our radius times 2 pi, the angle we traveled. So we can just divide by 2 pi to get our radius. So those pi's will cancel out, and 250 divided by 2 is 125 for that radius. For a carousel has a radius of 20 feet, and it makes 8 complete revolutions. How many feet does a person on the carousel travel during these 8 revolutions? Um, so we know that if they go around this carousel once, right, that they've gone um, 2 pi times that radius. So we know that the arc length equals 2 pi, the angle, times the radius. So they've got a full revolution is 2 pi radian. So one revolution equals 40 pi for the amount they traveled and they are traveling they're doing this eight times so then we can multiply this by eight and we get our total distance as 320 pi feet so what angle does the carousel travel through so we know every rotation is two pi and they are going in eight rotations so we get that total angle as 16 pi radians. Then it says, what's the relationship between the angle of rotation and the distance traveled? So the angle of rotation versus the distance. And so our angle of rotation was 16 pi, and our distance was 320 pi. 
And so that relationship is that um, this distance traveled is 20 times bigger, right? And where did the 20 come from? And that's the radius. So we could replace 20 with radius. So it's a radius times bigger. Number five, for which angle measures between zero and two pi is the cosine negative? So I like to draw a picture here. So when is the cosine negative, which is when is the x value negative? So the x value is negative this way. So that means in this second and third quadrant, the cosine is negative. So we're in one of those two. And the sine, the y values are positive. So the y values are positive in the first and the second. So that's going to be the second quadrant that has both of those things happening. For which value, for which angle measures between 0 and 2 pi is the cosine negative? So again, this is when is the x values negative, which is to the left. So that's going to be in quad 2 and 3 again. And the sine or the y values are negative. So now that's going to be in um, 3 or 4. So then we're in 3 where both of those things happen. Number 6, uh, pi over 2 rotation takes point D on the unit circle to point E. Um, which other radian rotation also takes d to e so let's look at a picture here so um a pi over two rotation takes d on the unit circle to e so i'm going to just put d here they didn't tell us it's at zero um but i'm going to put it here and then rotate pi over two to get to e so this is a pi over two rotation which will take d on to e so let's look at the rest of these so if we traveled three pi over two would that take D to E? And that's no, because that would take D to down here. So that one's not right. Um, 4 pi over 2, okay, which is really 2 pi, if we simplify that, 4 pi divided by 2, that would just take D back to itself. So that's not right. Um, 5 pi over 2. So this would be every quarter of a turn is pi over 2. So this would be 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2 would take D on to E. There's only one answer, so that's going to be it. 7 pi over 2 would have gone 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, so that would have brought us to the bottom. Number 7, a windmill blade spins in a counterclockwise direction, making one full revolution every 5 seconds. Which statements are true, select all that apply. So we know as we go all the way around here, right, that's five seconds. That's what they told us. So it says after 15 seconds, point W will be back in its starting position. So five every five seconds, so that's five, 10, 15, will put us right back on W, that's true. After one fifth of a second, point W will be in its starting position. Well, that would be splitting every one of these seconds into five parts. So we'd have 25 parts here. So it's going to go like to here. So it's not in its starting position after a fifth of a second. In one second, point W travels an angle of pi over five. So if it goes all the way around here, remember that this angle is two pi. So we're taking two pi and we're dividing that by five. That's how much would happen in one second. So 2 pi over 5 would be one second, not pi over 5. Um, the position of W repeats every 5 seconds. Yes, because 5 seconds is the period. So it's going to get us back 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and so on. So that would be true. And the position of W repeats every 10 seconds. Sure, because that's a multiple of 5, right? So 10 would just take it around twice to get to W. And then two more times will put us back to W. And then two more times will put us back to W. So yes, I mean, there's a repeat in the middle there, but every 10 seconds will end up on W. Number eight, here is a, here's the graph of a trig function. Which equation has this graph? So let's take a look. Um, 
so all of these are sine functions, okay? So that's one thing I noticed right away is all of these are sine functions. And remember that a sine function starts at a middle and it goes up and back down, okay? So this would be a normal, just the normal sine function. And when we look at this graph, it's not doing that, okay? It's starting at a minimum. So we have some type of phase shift, okay? Because our middle is here at negative one-fourth um, or at one-fourth. So we've got a phase shift. Remember, sine goes up and then back down. So we could have a phase shift over to a fourth, or we could have a phase shift all the way over here to negative three-fourths to go up and back down. Um, so that's one thing I'm noticing. We want to be looking for a phase shift. And then we have that amplitude. So the midline is at zero, and the amplitude then would be two, which all of these have. We do have a negative two here. Um, but this part A doesn't have a phase shift. So this one would just like flip this down like this. And that's not what we have because we're not starting at a middle. So this one is not correct. Um, and then all of these have two pi as the B value. So we don't even really fully need to look at the period because all of these have the same thing. Um, but that two pi B value would take our um, period and bring it to a one, which we see our period is a one on this graph. So let's take a look at um, if this graph were to be shifted, which of these is true. So if I just take and draw um, our sine function so we can shift it. So a sine function would be like that. So let me move it to its original position. So this one says we're going to, so a plus one fourth on the middle says we're going to take it back one fourth of a unit. Okay, and that is not on our graph, so B is wrong. Um, so let me put it back to where a sign normally is. And this next one says that we're going to take it and move it um, to the right one-fourth of a unit. And then we see that it lands right on top of the sign function that's graphed there, so part C would be the correct one.